Teachers are often positive about the value of using inquiry-based learning, but many find it difficult to overcome the barriers for adopting this approach in their classrooms. One of the main barriers for adopting RBL is that teachers are not quite sure how to incorporate in their classroom practice. Many teachers also feel under pressure to fulfill the curriculum requirements and they often assume that RBL will take too long. Although it is true that initially RBL can be time consuming, once the teacher becomes more experienced, their planning becomes more efficient and they are able to build a library of resources. Teachers are also unsure how to assess students in an RBL classroom and they have concerns that this teaching methodology doesn't suit educational systems where the assessment focuses on content in the form of final exams. To help teachers overcome these constraints, the ISE have developed an inquiry model incorporating five learning activities. Scaffolding plays an important role in this model, especially where teachers and students are new to inquiry. Most teachers and students are used to traditional methods of learning, so starting out with RBL is a different experience. Some teachers resist handing over control, while some students resist accepting it. Ideally, teachers should gradually apply inquiry into their classroom to suit the needs and level of their students, and scaffolding allows teachers to adjust accordingly. This means that teachers provide more support and guidance when developing inquiry skills and gradually taper off support until students can do it themselves. Understanding the teacher's role in RBL will help with scaffolding. It can be difficult for teachers starting out with RBL to know what their role is and also to know how to work that role in the most effective way to ensure that students experience true inquiry. It's important that the teacher has a deeper, integrated understanding of the curriculum content in order to facilitate the students' inquiries. They can then decide on learning activities that are going to engage the students and are designed to be challenging to promote their critical thinking skills. Activities need to revolve around the learners themselves, where the teacher stands on the side and provides guidance and support through open-ended questioning. The teacher can stand back and give the students the latitude to explore through the activities so that they can arrive at the learning objectives on their own, in their own way, and not just in the way that a teacher thinks is the best way for them to get there. The teacher guides the direction of the activity by posing questions. These are open-ended questions that stimulate more thinking and encourage students to take a more considered approach. It's very important to have questions lined up for various scenarios so that you are able to lead the students towards the learning goals while still offering flexibility in the direction. Teachers have a tendency to jump in too quickly with the answer if there is a slow response to questions. Give the students time to think about their answers and perhaps rephrase questions. Also, try and avoid jumping in and fixing the areas where students have gone wrong in their activities. It's better to use questions to help them to find the solutions themselves. <music>